and virtual reality experience that transcends Sunset House. It stimulates multiple senses and makes you feel as though you're actually physically beyond this planet. So I don't want to give too much away because I don't want to ruin your experience, but all I will say to you is that when you're in there and you've got those goggles on, make sure you look all around you because you would never get those visuals ever again. create this physical interface on um, the turbine and then once you go into the VR we recreated the space and also the turbine and then after a few seconds you kind of the turbine takes off and takes you on a ride. We enhanced the experience with uh, that sub pack which is um, transforming sound into um, vibration and then we designed a specific soundtrack for this um, and the whole you know stereo which is a spatial sound uh, design and then we've got the um, stereoscopic um, VR footage so the idea was kind of to create something to test you know how immersive uh, you can go with VR and really creating uh, you know a spatial experience that is fully you know that, that really creates kind of an emotional response really easy if you're doing something flat or something in a console shape rectangular form. You can do it in solid the, the geometry is really easy. You can scale it simply and everything will adjust accordingly. Very parametric. If you turn it into something that has that's natural and has equal curvature and really organic form, it gets really complicated. You can see right here, this is our numbering scheme. We have 650 panels, every single one's different. We have a hundred different angles scattered throughout the whole the whole wave. So every like this is angle 4.2, these two are both angle 4.2, this is angle 4, these are both fours. You can't do that with a human, it will just take too much labor. So we we wrote a program that writes the program to do this. So we were, now, now we basically learned how to make any form we want. And when uh, Somerset House, Ben Evans asked us if we wanted to have a room in, in LDF, <clears throat> we couldn't turn it down. And we thought it was a really good opportunity to do something, but we couldn't figure out what. So we thought about what inspires us. And, and our favorite surf break is on Santa Cruz Island off the coast of Santa Barbara. And this is as close as we could get to that exact form of that wave on a perfect day. And we thought, well, that's a really, really good way to test this new construction. So we built it, and it was really, really strong. Totally up to the challenge. Yeah. Uh, so this is an installation by Craig Tuber from Dora. Takes inspiration from traditional Victorian drawing room, which is a place where you can walk in your guests and show your finest furniture and ceramics and kind of pictures and images. From sure. Room. Uh, Faye has done this installation to reference some of the elements for her own, from her own life. So, for example, her father was a bird watcher, so there's sculptures of birds, drawings of birds on the wall. I mean, we use a record player to play these bird sounds uh, in space. Um, we've used this as a place to stage our latest collection, which is Assemblage 4, the Roly Poly collection. We're showing a daybed in a black pigmented resin, uh, as well as two lounge chairs. We've added to the collection with a low master table and a side table. We've got made in Jasmine. Um, we've also done a collaboration with a Japanese brand called Inwai, so we're showing a, a range of ceramics called pots. Uh, these are vessels in uh, Hachiwa. As well as that, Faye collaborates with her sister Erica on a range of fashion brand called Too Good. So the clothes you can see on the side are the Oil Winter 2015 collection. snapshot of some of the furniture that we sell and this year we wanted to try and do something a little bit different um, so we approached 150 of the world's leading furniture and um, product designers and asked them a very simple question what's your favorite book 
and the majority of them responded. So we've created this installation based on the reading list of these leading creatives. So as you walk around and sort of immerse yourself in the space, you can see the favourite book of Marcel Wanders or Patricia Moroso or Giulio Capolini alongside people like Mr Bingo or, or lesser known creatives as well. Um, and then this is all being compiled into a reading list which is online as well. And the thinking was that people can come in, have a look through, sit down, pick up a book and sort of immerse themselves in this library experience whilst taking in the furniture as well. Mine's up here. Uh, where are we? Big Sir Kerouac. This is Rust. Um, Rust is a, a project made of jasmineite, plaster, and key dust. I collaborate with um, key uh, cutters, uh, locksmiths people all over London, and they give me their key waste. Uh, when they duplicate keys, there is this powder coming out, and I just mix that with. Um, with the materials and uh, all pieces are unique, obviously. Um, all pieces are white as a starting point and then the rest of the time. Um, it takes about sometimes weeks, sometimes months to rust and to get these colors and rounded patterns. It's completely unpredictable. And that's it, I develop a little collection of jewelry boxes, uh, cash bowl, vases, fruit bowls, um, but it can be anything really. Um, I, in purpose, I uh, choose for a very simple design, um, something uh, very straightforward because uh, the material and the texture is already quite organic, quite uh, noisy, so I wanted to keep the shapes for the rest, um, very simple. So Opportunity is a design research um, agency based in the heart of London and we specialise in pattern research and design and um, we've just um, basically expanded our last five years of research into a book exploring the bigger pictures of pattern and its philosophy throughout the world and how it connects people together. range of different artists from very new graduates um, so this guy Lanty Ball he is a new graduate from the University of Lancashire um, so he's quite young right up to um, Andrew Logan who's sort of a well-established artist from you know 30 40 years uh, he's been going uh, and he he did the Princess Julia sculpture he did the pieces in the window Gary Betts here, and this one, one in the window, and these two pieces in the corner here. And he's been going, I guess, about five years, but is sort of getting very popular. He, um, he's been taken on by various galleries, so he sells really well. There are three glass artists amongst us, so Brett Manley, me, I do the light boxes there and that big light box there on the wall. And then we've also got Lucy Bat, who does these pieces. These are blown and um, engraved pieces here. Uh, and then we have a couple of ceramicists. I'm a swimmer and um, I'm interested in leather work. And um, these, are, uh, these are leather made from salmon. Um, but it's using sustainable techniques like the Inuit use. So um, all these are just, uh, it's like, it's connected with food too, so it's the same materials make the leather as would, you would cook with. So these are oil tanned and made with oil. Um, the, there's a, and, and the food thing and the food chain and fish. So this is about the ghost fishing because in the sea there was a lot, lot of nets which just fish 
and the fish get caught in the nets and then they die. And then if you look at the, the shape where the scales have been, they look like nets. And it's that, it's just work about that really. And this is just more work about the sea. Uh, this is, this is um, a tissue from the inside of salmon skin and uh, a sort of alternative plastic thing. Really. And there's a lot of trouble with plastic in the sea too, so it's all that connection. The last person is Katrina Faulkner, who she's also in the last year sort of done very, very well. She's relatively new, but her work is really get, you know, becoming quite well known. She, everything she does, I mean, if you come and have a closer look, everything she does has been um, recycled, found, salvaged, and then she sews everything. And she's quite inspired by Frida Kahlo because she has a kind of personal history which slightly echoes Frida Kahlo's personal history. And she just literally spends hours and hours and hours just sewing these tiny little pieces onto her, onto her uh, work. for London. It's an exhibition that's exploring new ways that we can solve London's housing crisis. Um, so the idea is there's loads, there's an abundance of brownfield land in London that could be used temporarily for these kind of structures, so container houses. So in this prototype house we've tried to show different ways that you can adapt to small spaces. So for example this kitchen table rolls along, so this becomes your living space and this becomes your kitchen space but then you can roll it back it's a bit squeaky <laughs> and then this becomes your eating space and you can also flip this back and then you have a much larger preparation space so it's showing how we're we you know we're going to have to live in smaller spaces um as the cities become a lot more popular but it's using our smaller spaces more efficiently and more effectively. Is the sleeping and work room. So by day, your wardrobe oh, <laughs> stays back here and this becomes your workspace and your bathroom's there. And then by night, you roll this back You have your clothing storage in here, and then you pull your bed down. And then this becomes your sleeping space. And then they again, you push it back up. And that's the <laughs> that's the done. <laughs> Hi, uh, I'm Kirsty White. I'm the product design manager at Heels. Uh, this is our flagship store. And for London Design Festival, we're doing quite a few different things. We're launching our autumn winter ranges, Pinna, Dodi, and Fawn. Also launching uh, Heels Discovers, which is our annual initiative of selecting up and coming designers and selling their work. And we've also got a representation at the Design Junction for part of our trade department. celebrate that we've just renovated our store and uh, we've been manufacturing beds and full poster beds and mattresses and now we actually sell everything from lighting, accessories, uh, furniture and candles and we've just opened our new store called Queen's uh, on Westbourne Park. Yeah.